Hey viewers, I recently bought this Trek 720 as a frame. It came with wheels, but they were the wrong size wheels on there. They were 26 inch wheels where it should have 700 C wheels on there. So I swapped the wheels on there. Um, it was missing handlebar and stem, so I installed a handlebar and stem on there. Uh, the next step on here is the brakes. It's got cantilever brakes, but they're all busted up. The cantilever brakes are the first generation of Altus brakes. They had the gray collars, uh, which were prone to like breaking. So this one's completely missing here. The one on the other side is cracked, and the ones on the front are messed up as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace these. I could replace them with uh, newer Altus uh, cantilever brakes, and I've got those. But what I decided to do instead is I'm going to convert this over to V brakes. Now normally what I would do is I'd go ahead and remove the old uh, brake levers and stuff on there but since this didn't have any handlebars there was no brake levers or shifters on there so I don't need to do that and I didn't need to cut the cables so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by uh, removing the cantilever brakes off of there. Now removing the, the cantilever brakes is just uh, pretty easy it's just a matter of uh, using like a five millimeter uh, hex wrench and removing this bolt here. This is actually a little stiff here. So then remove the bolt there and then just slide the old brake off. Do that for all four of the cantilever brakes. Okay, next thing I want to do is remove this cable hanger here since I'm not going to need it with the V-brakes. So what I'll do is I'll remove the, the uh, stem here. Loosen this. And slide this out. Then I'm going to remove this lock nut here. and slide this off. Now the cable hanger here is actually pretty thick here and it actually worked as a spacer on the steerer tube. So I want to replace that with some equivalent amount of spacers here. So I have a spacer here that's about the same uh, thickness as what this is. So I'm going to slide that on there like that and then I'm going to put this lock nut on here and I'll screw this down by hand to start off with. And then I've got a cone wrench here that I'm used to uh, hold this uh, top cup here to keep it from turning. And then I'll use my adjustable wrench here to tighten the lock nut. And get that all tightened down like that. And then I can remount the handlebars on there, get them positioned down to where they were. And then lock these down. Like that. Okay, now I'm getting ready to mount the brakes themselves. And before I do that, I want to go ahead and loop up these posts that the brakes mount onto, just with a little bit of uh, marine grease here, just so everything uh, uh, moves nice and smoothly when they're mounted. Okay, now the V brakes have two sides. There's the right side and the left side. The uh, right side is going to have a, a clamp here for the uh, cable and the left side here is going to have like a little part here where the noodle is going to catch onto. Now, when I'm going to install these in there, on the back side there's like a little pin, or like where a spring uh, comes out here. That little pin needs to go down into one of these little holes down in here. On this one there's like three holes on each side and it's going to go into the middle hole. Sometimes there might be just one hole, it'll go in that hole, but if there's three, generally it's going to go into the middle hole. And so sometimes it's kind of going to be a little difficult to try to line this up because the brake's going to get in the way, it's going to hit the frame there when you try to slide it on there. Uh, what you can do is on the back here you have this little spring and then there's a catch here, is go ahead and disengage this spring from the catch like that. Now you can go ahead, slide this onto the post, line up that spring so with that middle hole and then go ahead and just re-engage the spring there so now it's nice and springy there same thing with the other side just disengage that, that spring there slide it onto the post 
get that pin lined up with the metal hole in there then you can re-engage this spring there and so they're on there nice and uh, like that and then I'm going to use these screws here that came out of the original brakes and um, you can put some thread locker on there use some very light thread locker if you do nothing real permanent and then there's a washer on each one this just to help allow everything to uh, move nice and smoothly when you get everything installed and I'm going to use my five millimeter Allen wrench to tighten these screws in. Now when the uh, bolts are tightened in, uh, move the uh, brakes, make sure they move nice and smoothly and everything works good there. Same thing on the front. Uh, again, I'm just going to use a little bit of marine grease onto these posts like that. I've got the brakes here. I'm going to slide these on. Again, the uh, one uh, with the, the uh, cable clamp here is going to go on the right. The one with the noodle is going to go on the left. That's as you're facing the post like that. And then I'm going to disengage the spring there. It just makes it easier to slide it on there. This little pin is going to go into this middle hole here. Line that up. And when I get it on there, then I go ahead and re-engage that spring. Same thing on the other side here. And then re-engage the spring like that. And then screw in these bolts. And when the bolts are tightened, test the brakes, make sure that they move nice and smoothly, and they do. Now I'm ready to install the brake levers onto the handlebars here. Now when I got this bike, it didn't have the handlebars, so it didn't have the brake levers on there. But had the brake levers been on here, they would have been designed for cantilever brakes. Uh, but since I'm switching over to uh, V-brakes, um, they wouldn't have worked. V-brakes require about twice as much cable pull uh, as cantilever brakes, so that those brake levers would just not have worked properly. So I have uh, some new uh, brake levers and they're actually integrated into shifters. These are Shimano EF51 uh, shift lever slash brake levers and I, I like these. They're, you get them relatively inexpensively but they're designed for V-brakes. It says V-brakes right on there and so they're going to have the right amount of cable pull and so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and slide these onto the handlebars like that. And then in order to position these properly, I'm going to install the grips on here. So I've got these grips here and I got a little bit of uh, isopropyl alcohol. This is my favorite method for installing uh, new grips is just drip a little bit of uh, the uh, rubbing alcohol in there, isopropyl alcohol in there, shake it around, get the inside of the grip all covered with alcohol and then it will slide right on there. And then as the alcohol evaporates, it will, um, the grip will be nice and solid onto there. If you don't have isopropyl alcohol, you can get this at the grocery store or your pharmacy or anything like that. Um, if you can't get that, you can also use like a little bit of hairspray. Spray that inside there and then when the, the hairspray, uh, the alcohol and the hairspray evaporates, they'll be nice and solid on there like that. And then I'll go ahead and position these to where I want them to be, get the angle here. And then there's a little uh, clamp bolt here on the back side here. So I'll just go ahead and tighten these down. And I can always adjust these a little bit later, but I'll get them just a little bit over there from the grip and tighten this down here. And then get the other one here about the same position. Tighten this down a little bit. And then kind of make sure that it's roughly like the same angle this way as the other side and get it and then tighten this clamp down over here like that okay now I'm going to need to uh, cut some cable housing here for the front brake so I've got one of the noodles so I'm just going to slide the noodle into the little catch here and leave it there and then I'm kind of just test fit this cable here like this and bring this down here and try to get the rough size here so I want a fairly smooth uh, exit coming out of here 
and the angle coming down there and that actually looks pretty good so I'm gonna cut the cable right here with my cable cutters and as always use good quality cable cutters you tend to get uh, nice uh, you know much better uh, cuts here and I can use this kind of trim this just a little bit clean that up there and check the other side here make sure that this is clean this end up just a little bit that looks better and then I use a, like an awl or a scribe here to help open up the linings inside the cable here so that the cable uh, can pass through like that. Okay, so now I want to mount the cable into the brake lever here. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this uh, barrel adjuster here is there's a couple little slots in both the little lock ring and the barrel adjuster here. And there's a slot running down the front of the brake lever here. So what I'm gonna do is get these lined up with that slot. I'll take this uh, barrel, uh, the little end here of the cable, slide this into that little part there, and get this into the little slot that runs down the front there. Get this in through the slot of the barrel adjuster there, and then I can go ahead and turn that barrel adjuster, close that down, and so that's all in there like that. And so now I've got my cable housing here. I'm gonna put a ferrule onto the end of the cable housing here. Just slide that on there like that. And so the, the, the cable, the ferrule will go into there and the, the noodle, do, this noodle doesn't need a ferrule. So slide my cable in through the housing here. Get that in position here. And then I can run my cable down here through the noodle. And pull it through here like this and then get the cable housing fully seated down into the noodle like that. Now before I hook up uh, the cable here, I need to adjust the brake pad since these uh, brakes were not on this bike here before. So what I'm gonna do is use just an Allen wrench on these particular ones, sometimes it might be a nut driver or something, but uh, loosen these brake pads here, and then I'm going to adjust this in, kind of just move the, the arm in to where the brake pad hits and is in line with the curvature of the rim there, and that it's not going to hit the uh, tire at all. And I want it so that the front end of the brake, the forward uh, part of the brake, is gonna hit very slightly before the back end of the brake. So what I can do is I can just take maybe a dime here and slide it underneath the back side of the brake pad, like this between the rim and the uh, brake pad and push the brake pad in against the rim and then tighten it down here. And that's what's called toe in. And I do that on all four brakes, front and back. And so that this front end of the brake is just gonna hit very slightly before the back and it'll just be smoother and quieter when that hits there. So just go ahead and adjust all four brakes just like that. Okay, so now I'm ready to hook up this cable here. So I got the uh, nipple engaged here and that little part there. I got this little rubber boot, slide that on here. Um, this is loose here, so I'm gonna slide the cable here through this, this little clamp here. Like that. And then, Kind of pull these in a little bit. Then just let, then just let it out just a little bit here. And then I'm going to clamp this down a little bit and see how this seems to work here. And test the brakes and feel how it, it works. And I have about the right amount of movement here, though this arm over here is not moving as much as this one, but I have about the right amount of movement on the lever. I can maybe let it down just a hair. And try this. Yeah, it's a little bit better. And so now what I can do is adjust the tension on the brakes here. There's a couple different ways I could do it is 
Um, there's little screws down here that what I could do is tighten this one and loosen this one a little bit and that would kind of uh, move it over a little bit. So I'll just loosen this one like about a turn and then tighten this one down. A little bit and see if they work and still not so a little bit farther so I'm gonna tighten this one down just a little bit more another turn and loosen this one about a turn and that seems to be a lot better another uh, alternative method uh, you can do if you just can't quite get it adjusted with the screws is if you go ahead disengage the spring here you can actually physically bend the spring so if one side's just not coming out away from the rim you can uh, sit there like if it was this side not coming out you could actually just bend the spring a little bit and then just re-engage it to give it a little bit more spring but this is actually working pretty well like that so then what I'll do is I'm going to tighten this all the way down cut the excess cable off here like this leave it a couple inches on there uh, get that all clean, cleaned up there. Put a crimp end on the end of the cable here and crimp this into place like this. And then what I can do is I can just take this cable and kind of tuck it back there like that. And I have the front one all done. Okay, I'm getting ready to start working on the back brake here. Uh, usually with uh, cantilever brakes, there'll be some sort of a cable hanger here. And often it's attached to the uh, seat post clamp, but there's nothing there, so I don't need to take anything off there. What they have here is like a little tube that the cable go through, and it's attached to the frame. And so I'm just going to leave that there, pull the liner out, but just leave the, the little thing there. Um, but what I am going to need is a cable stop up here on the top tube, so I can have a bit of cable housing go from there, down to the noodle for the V-brake. And I've got a couple uh, little clamp-on cable stops here. These are both from Originate. There's other brands out there you can look at as well. I really only need one, and so I have a single one here, and I can mount that on there, but one of the things is, is it have this little clamp part sticking out the side there. So I'm not sure if I really would like the look of that. Um, so I also have a double here, and I can put that on there, and the, the clamp part's gonna be facing down, and even though I'm only going to be using one, I think it's still going to be a cleaner look. So I think I'm going to go ahead and go with this one. But you can shop around and see if there's other ones out there that uh, fit your needs better. And so I got my cable stop here. And so I'm going to leave like the little openings where the cables will go facing to the rear. Just slide this onto here like this. The screw is going to go through here like this. And they come in different clamp sizes as well. So you want to make sure that you get one that's going to fit the frame of your bike. And so I'm going to just tighten this screw in here and get it nice and straight. And I'm going to leave it like, I don't know, like about two and two and three inches here in front of the seat post. And then just clamp this down into position like that. And so now I need to measure uh, some cable housing for the, the rear brake here to go from here down to this cable stop there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fit it in there and fit it up around in here. And what I want to do is have a, enough cable housing so that when I close this here or turn this here that it's not going to bind up. And so like right about like this and then I open this back up there. And so then I've got a nice little uh, clean loop there and won't be a problem the other direction. So what I'm going to do is cut the housing right here like this. Then just kind of clean up the, the end of it here where I cut it. Get nice clean there. Then I'll use my awl to open up the lining and the end of the cable like that. And so I have this piece all cut just like that. And then I need to cut the cable housing here for this back part. And so it's going to fit in this cable stop right there. And then I have the noodle fitted in the brake like that. And so I wanted to come up and then it's going to go like this to the noodle. 
and I want to sort of, uh, you know, a relatively smooth transition. I don't want it to be too tight there. And so I'm actually going to cut it just a little bit longer than what I th think I'm going to need because I can always shorten it a little bit if I decide it's just too long there. So I clean up the end here like that. Then use my awl to clean up the holes going into the liner. Okay, now just like I did on the other side here, I got the cable here, put this into the end there. I'm going to run this through the little slot in the front there, get the barrel adjuster, adjuster little slots lined up there, and then go ahead and screw this in so I have the cable into the brake lever there. I've got the cable housing that I cut here, so I'm going to put a ferrule on both ends because I want a ferrule going in there and I want a ferrule going into the cable stop down on the top tube there. And so, ferrule on both ends of the cable housing there. And then run the cable through the housing. Get it fitted into the cable stop down there and pull the cable through like this and so I'm gonna route this out in front like that and so test it there and so that all goes nice and smoothly without binding up there okay and then I've got the cable housing that I cut for back here and I want a ferrule on the end that goes in here but I don't need one that goes into the noodle so just slide the ferrule onto the end of the housing there and I've got my Brake cable, run it through the little uh, cable housing here, get this fit into the cable stop there, and then I'm going to run this down through the noodle, like this. Get the cable housing seated down into the little uh, noodle end here, and then fit the noodle into place onto the brake like that and I like that curve there it's it's pretty pretty clean there so I think this is going to work there like that okay so I set this little uh, boot here into place and put that over there and then I'm going to take the cable and slide it over here through the cable clamp like this kind of pull these into place to where they're uh, touching the rim and then let it out just a little bit and then uh, tentatively Tighten down this cable here and see how this feels as far as braking. See what kind of movement I get there. And a little tight, so I'm going to loosen this just a little bit. See how this feels here. And that's better, maybe just a little bit. Because I can always tighten it up with the barrel adjusters on there. And so this actually, good movement here. So I'm going to tighten this down here. But now I need to tighten uh, or adjust these uh, brakes here. So I can always see that these screws here, this one's up out farther than this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to loosen this screw. Like about a turn and a half. And then I'm going to tighten this screw in about a turn and a half and see how that feels. And I'm still not getting the movement on this one that I want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pull this spring out and then just kind of manually just bend it just a little bit and put this back in there and see if that gives me a little bit more movement. A little bit. That seems a little bit better there. I think just a little bit more. And tighten this down just a little bit more, see if that helps. Okay, that looks pretty good like that. So now what I'll do is tighten down this screw all the way here. I'm going to cut this excess cable off here. Put 
put a crimp on on here and clamp this on here like this and then just tuck this back behind there like that get that out of the way okay I'm all done installing the V-brakes and so that's how to convert from cantilevers to V-brakes I'm not going to install the shipper cables in this video I already have that in some other videos um, I'll post a link in the description for one of those um, but you know so I just mostly want to focus on the conversion from the cantilevers to the V-brakes anyway hope you found this useful or interesting if you did please give my video a thumbs up if you're not subscribed to my channel, click the big subscribe button because you get to see new videos that come out. I'm always coming out with new videos. I'm over on Facebook, RJ the Bike Guy. Go over there, uh, like that page. I post a lot of stuff over there. And I have a webpage, rjthebikeguy.com. Go over there, subscribe. I have my videos all categorized and I have some forums where you can ask questions. Anyway, thank you very much for watching.